talk about ergonomics. Yeah, that's a big. That's one. a big factor, and I know that in the industry. So many. I mean, I recently heard a conversation uh, about the effects of ergonomics on the medical impact, yeah. the medical need in the industry. Now, we've seen a lot of videos on other products like that are not with these, but yeah. you know, like uh, what's what is the name of it, Levator. Or levitate. whatever you levitate, yep. you know the products that you know are actually just helping you move your arm, yeah. helping you take the stress off of that. You know, because tools can get heavy, Absolutely. and uh, yeah. we deal with ergonomics in the finishing side. You yeah. know, the finishing guns like these up here. You know, it's all about the weight and the impact on the wrist and the impact on the trigger finger and you know how much pressure it takes to move something. So, I'm sure in your world. It's a big impact. Some of these tools are not lightweight. No, no. I mean, it's it's a huge impact. And you know, we we uh, there was a company that did a case study. Then they shared the, the the results with us. You can't put a you cannot put a price on you know safety, right? Correct. But um, <laughs> they attempted. But to, they do. But they, they did. did. <laughs> Um, but they you know, every day. you know. So so obviously we want you know we want people to go home the same way they came in, right? Um, and, and our customers do too, so don't take it that way. But, but they did, they said, you know, any sort of lost time uh, incident on average costs about $75,000. So that could be a day, which wouldn't, wouldn't be as much or, or more than that, right? These longer term yep. effects, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. So I would definitely say, uh, you know, Europe kind of led the way in, in formalizing ergonomic standards. Um, but North America, China, um, has done a, the, we've done a really good job in both those regions, uh, kind of following suit, and making sure that the tools are lightweight, ergonomic. Um, operators, I would say, have a lot more uh, influence than they did ten years ago yeah. on on the decision on the tool purchasing decision. So, you know, if you if you you got a good price, uh, you got good performance for the mechanical engineer or the the manufacturing engineer. And you got good ergonomics for everybody, like the operator. That's important to the operator and speed and things like that. That's a big deal as far as helping, you know, get the sale or, or more beyond that, right? Just be the best tool for the application. Yep. Yeah, and that's where we see a lot of times that the challenges. You, you mentioned earlier the challenges stacking up one on top of the other, and and I mean it's easy for us to to go into a place and and have a customer say, hey, I need a tool that can do. Uh, Hypothetically, 150 foot pounds, right? And uh, yeah, we've got a tool for that. Here it is. But yeah. the, the challenge on top of that is, well, I also need it to be reactionless. <laughs> okay, now that's throwing a, a whole new wrench into it. And uh, I mean, literally, literally, yeah, literally. yeah. And <laughs> torque, and and you need to make sure that we educate the customer on torque. Torque's a, a real thing, and it's it's dangerous. Um, oh yeah, it, it can be dangerous, and so that's where our expertise. That's why they call it kick. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's where uh, uh, our expertise and Clico's expertise comes into play on how do we accomplish this goal for this customer and, and meet this challenge and tackle it for him with, with what he needs and uh, with a solution that will provide everything he needs. Yep. So, Very complex subject. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, that's just scratching the surface of it. I mean, it, it gets much deeper than that, I think, maybe more time than we have today. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll, 